Hey there drone fans, Rick here again from Drone Valley. So today I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about some of the settings inside of the DJI GO application. I get a ton of questions on the website and the YouTube channel about what a particular setting does, how it affects either the flight of the quad or the image quality, and I thought rather than answer all those questions individually, which I'm happy to do anyway, I'd put a clip together because there seems to be a lot of interest about maybe what parameters you should change or not change and how that could affect things with the quad. So I'm going to use the Mavic Pro as sort of my example quad. A lot of these settings apply to the Phantom as well. and I'm using the latest version of the application, the DJI GO application. So if you're using an older version, the menus might look a little bit differently, but the settings are buried in there somewhere. Now there's a lot of menus and sub-menus inside that application. So this would be a two-hour clip if I did all of the settings in one shot. So what I thought I'd do is break them into different sections and do future clips on some of the sections that I'm not going to cover today. Today is primarily going to be about the gimbal settings, and that's the one that I get the most questions about. So stay tuned and we'll get into it in a second. To get started, Open up the DJI GO application. On the main menu, if you look closely, you'll see three dots in the upper right hand corner. If you tap those dots, they'll take you to the general settings menu. Along the left hand side of that menu is a grouping of icons, each of which will take you to a subsection where you can make adjustments for that particular area of the quad. We're going to focus on the gimbal settings today, which is the lowest icon in that group. It looks like a camera. If you tap on that icon, it'll bring up the gimbal settings menu. If you're looking at the main gimbal settings menu, you have a few adjustments you can make from here, and there's also an advanced settings submenu that you can access for even further adjustment. Now I'm going to take a few minutes and go through each of these settings individually, explain what they do, and give you a feel for how I set these when I fly my quad. The first setting I want to talk about is the gimbal mode, and you have two choices in gimbal mode. You have follow, and you have FPV, first person view. Now normally you're going to be in follow mode. Most people don't change this. In follow mode, the copter is going to behave just as you'd expect it would. It's got a lot of sophisticated electronics inside that all they do is to keep that copter rock solid and focus on what it is you're trying to photograph. And it'll, when the wind buffets it, it'll compensate for that. If you make jerky movements with the sticks, it'll compensate for that. So it's built to be an incredibly smart machine that stabilizes the platform for the best possible picture. The FPV mode is dramatically different. When you put it in FPV mode, it locks a lot of those controls. So it makes it a much more rigid camera that effectively is adhered to the body of the camera. And the reason for that is if you're flying FPV and you've got goggles on, you want to feel the dipping and the movement of that quad as you're flying because essentially you're in the cockpit of the quad. So the movements that are compensated for in follow mode don't happen in FPV mode. And I'll show you a couple of examples in a minute. But I wouldn't put it in FPV mode unless you're going to fly FPV because you're going to want all the sophistication that gives you that rock solid stable picture on all the time. So I leave mine in follow mode unless I'm going to fly FPV and again the choice is yours. So stay tuned and I'll show you the two different views. So the gimbal mode setting determines exactly what happens with the quad when you're flying, how stabilized the actual image is of the quad. Now normally it's in follow mode. If you want to put it in FPV mode, just tap that button, you have a choice between the two. But in follow mode, you have all the stabilization characteristics of the quad, keeping that picture extremely stable when you're flying. Here I am going left to right. It's a very windy day. I'm being buffeted by the winds. I've got elevation changes and that camera is rock solid. Now if you go to FPV mode, we actually lock the camera, essentially eliminating that stabilization. So when I pivot right, you can see that camera actually tilt. Now that seems a little unsettling if you're used to stabilized video, but if you're flying with FPV goggles on, you want to feel like you're in the cockpit of that actual quad. So those kind of movements are something that are essential for flying in FPV mode. The next item down in the main gimbal settings menu is centering camera, and that's more of a maintenance function than it is an adjustment, and that's something you'd want to do if you've had a crash with your quad, or maybe you've roughly handled it, and you notice when you're filming your center point is a little bit off, you just hit that button, it'll go through an automatic procedure and center that camera for you. The next setting down has to do with adjusting the gimbal roll. What they mean by gimbal roll is the relative position of the quad to the horizontal plane. So if you've had a rough landing or maybe you forgot to put the gimbal guard on or the gimbal stop behind it and you bang the gimbal or even over time it can get fatigue inside the gimbal if it's not perfectly vertical and is off a little bit to one side the quad's going to want to fly level and the gimbal may not be aligned perfectly at that perpendicular so what the gimbal roll allows you to do is to very gently adjust the perspective of that gimbal relative to the horizontal position of the copter. So you have adjustments in both directions. You can tilt it this way a little bit or this way a little bit and that's going to make the adjustments up front to bring the gimbal's position in exact accordance with the way that the drone is flying. And I'll show you an example of that now. 
Before you start adjusting your gimbal roll, you're going to want to make sure you have your quad on a flat level surface and powered up. Now don't just trust that the table or the surface you're sitting on is level. Actually break out a carpenter's level with bubbles on it and make sure that that surface is perfectly level. Because what you're going to do is adjust the camera's perspective relative to the horizontal flight of the quad. Now when the quad takes off, it's got a ton of sensors and things inside of it that are going to keep the platform level. And what you're adjusting with the gimbal roll is the difference between what the gimbal thinks is horizontal and what the quad's presenting as horizontal. So if you're flying and you've got horizon issues where they're not actually level, or maybe you've had a bad crash and you've damaged the gimbal a little bit, this will allow you to make adjustments both left and right to uh, compensate for whatever difference there is between the quad and the actual gimbal. Now, to get to that, you just basically tap the adjust gimbal roll. What that'll do is open up a screen that shows you the perspective from the quad. So you'll see actual video of what the quad sees. And then on the bottom, you've got two little arrows you can tap where you can twist that perspective digitally, left or right, as much as necessary to make that adjustment so that the gimbal and the actual flight pattern of the quad in horizontal position match up. Pretty straightforward. The last menu item on the gimbal settings page is gimbal auto calibration. And again, this is a maintenance procedure, not really a parameter you can change. When you tap that button, it's going to go through an auto calibration of the gimbal. So you have to make sure that you've got your quad on a flat level surface before you start this procedure. You push the button and it happens automatically. Now I'll explore the advanced settings submenu. And there's some settings in here that you're going to want to pay attention to because they really have an impact on the way the gimbal operates. And some of them are really cool. So to get to this menu, you're basically going to tap that advanced settings and that's going to bring up an entire submenu with four separate choices where you can make adjustments. I'll go through again each of these individually and give you an idea of what settings I prefer. The first setting you have access to in the advanced tab is gimbal pitch exp which should really just be labeled gimbal speed and what that controls is how fast the gimbal goes from horizontal position to 90 degree down position back up to horizontal position. And you have control of that with the little thumb wheel on your controller. The challenge is when you're doing those pans down, if it's so responsive that it moves very quickly, it's hard to get that beautiful smooth scrolling down when you're doing filming. So what I like to do is adjust that and make it slower. So the slower you make it, even at a full twist of that thumb wheel, the slower that gimbal comes down. So it's a very easy thing to adjust, but I find that it makes it much more cinematic the lower those settings are. Now the standard, it goes from 0 to 100. The standard on it is 25. I feel like 25 is too fast. Even though I'm getting pretty good at pulling it over just a little bit, I'd really like to know that at full pull, or full stop if you will, that it gives me a nice smooth down motion. So I'll show you how you make those adjustments now, and I'll give you two examples of how it's set from the factory and how it's set at what I consider to be the preferred setting. The gimbal pitch EXP adjustment, or the gimbal speed adjustment, gives you a parameter that you can adjust between 0 and 100. The factory is set at 25, and what this controls, again, is the speed of the gimbal moving down and up. Now, if you adjust this towards the high end, which is the faster end, closer to 100, the gimbal is going to move so quickly that it's going to be hard to really focus on a subject. And even though you have control with the jog wheel, it's a very delicate movement to spin that wheel a little bit and have that gimbal come down very, very quickly. So I find that the closer you get to 100, the less cinematic your shots are. You're going to find that the video is jerky, people are going to get nauseous watching it, it just doesn't really add a lot of value to the quality of the video. Now conversely, if you get closer to zero, you're going to get really, really slow shots, which are great from a cinematic perspective, but you may not be able to make the adjustment in time to get the shot you want. So you're going to try and find a, a bit of a Goldilocks zone that I've found to be somewhere between, say, 5 and 25. I feel like 25 is still too fast for me, so I usually settle in around 10 on that adjustment. Now I'll show you two videos here that I shot. The first one's going to be shot at the factory setting of 25, and I'm pushing the gimbal adjustment wheel all the way to the end. So I'm trying to do these side by side to give you a feel for how quickly they move. And you can see that it's a nice smooth movement and I know you've got some control on the jog wheel and again this is a very personal setting but for me this is still moving too quickly. So I'm going to show you now what the 10 setting looks like. This is the one that I like and I usually keep it on this setting. You can see with the thumb wheel all the way to the right you can see how smoothly it moves down. Very cinematic panning going on there. It's just going to add a lot of value to the quality of the shots you get. And it still gives you the control you need, but it's not got that jerky kind of amateur look to it. It's got a very nice smooth movement. And when you're doing panning or circling an object, it really adds a lot of value to the picture. This next setting is called Enable Upwards Gimbal Tilt. Now, when I first found that, I was a little confused as to what it did because I know that the camera can actually come to horizontal and go down to 90 degrees, but what this setting does, if you turn this on, it actually allows you to look beyond that horizon up. 
So there are times when you're flying, maybe you're trying to capture a setting sun or a moon or maybe something in the sky above you, normally you would have to fly to that height because you can only shoot to the horizon. So you've only got a shot this way or 90 degrees down. The minute you enable this, this upward tilt function, it allows you to vary that camera above that horizon and go up, up to 30 degrees taller. So I'll give you a couple of examples of what it looks like. You should know what the standard settings are like, but I'll show you both the standard settings and when this is enabled. I like that an awful lot and I keep it on all the time because there are always times where I'm, I'm shooting something and maybe I want to get a look up and I want to get a look further down. And to do that before, I'd have to actually elevate the copter. By having the ability to actually tilt that up, I can keep the copter at a lower height and actually capture video footage of things that are taller than where I'm flying. So stay tuned and I'll show you both of those. With the enable gimbal tilt limit, you really only have two choices. It's either it's on or it's off. And what I find really interesting is that the factory settings have it off. And I wouldn't even have found it had I not stumbled across it because I'm one of those guys that likes to go through every setting there is available in a particular application. And I thought to myself, why would you not set this as on as a default? Because to me, it's a major advantage to be able to look above the horizon with my drone. Now normally, and you're looking at some footage here of me doing the normal gimbal tilt, normally I can capture what I need to film between the horizon and straight down. So most of the stuff I'm filming, I'm flying above it, so I've got a really good perspective, you know, looking down from above between the horizon and my straight down. But every now and then there may be a reason for me to look above the horizon. So for example, if I'm flying to a particular structure that I can't fly as high as I'd like to, I can't really see above it. So having the ability to do the gimbal tilt above the horizon allows me to look at things that are far above where I'm flying, and I turn it on all the time. So my recommendation would be to turn this on. There you go, you can see me above the horizon right there. Pretty cool. This next adjustment is called Gimbal Pitch Smoothness, and it took me a while to figure this one out because it's not readily apparent when you first start playing around with it. What this adjustment does is it controls how quickly the gimbal reacts to your finger movement on that jog wheel. So you've got an adjustment between, I think it's 0 and 30, and right now the factory setting is at 15, which curiously is perfect for this particular setting. But try and think of it for a second as if you're wearing a brand new pair of sneakers, and you're running on brand new blacktop, and you try to stop, versus trying to stop on a sheet of ice. When you run and stop on that blacktop, you stop immediately. When you try to stop on ice, you may slide past the point where you want to stop and you'll eventually come to a stop. That's exactly what this adjustment does. Now you think, why would I need that? Well, your brain wants to see smooth movements. So when you're flying and you're trying to do video, if you have complete control where it's directly related to the gimbal moving the minute you hit the jog wheel, you're gonna have a very jerky start and a very jerky stop. So what the smoothness adjustment does is when you hit the jog wheel, it'll slowly ramp up the speed of that movement and then ramp down the speed of the movement at the end of its travel when you let go of that particular thumb wheel. So I've got some video footage to show you, but again, the 15 for me is perfect for this. It's right in the middle of the zero to 30. If you go too high up on one end, it's gonna be very sloppy where it's gonna slide well past the point where you want it to stop. And if you go too short, you're gonna have really jerky videos, which is gonna take uh, the person watching that video out of the moment and, and really ruin the video, quite honestly. So let me show you what they look like. Now the video I'm gonna show you um, has a label up top that shows you when I hit the jog wheel and when it started moving and when it took my finger off the jog wheel. And you'll see once I take my finger off, it'll continue to move a little bit beyond that. And the setting I have set up right now is 15. So hang on and I'll show you that clip. The gimbal pitch smoothness adjustment varies between 0 and 30, and I feel they nailed this one right on the money at 15. I did play around with it a little bit and got closer to 20 with it, but I found the higher I went up, the sloppier it got, and it's a concern for me because I want to take my finger off that jog wheel and actually have it skid to a stop pretty quickly, because if it takes too long to come to a stop, it actually may go past the point I'm trying to film. I found the same to be true at the lower end of the spectrum. If I went down closer to 5, it was such a jerky motion when it started and stopped that it really gave me an unnatural feel of the video. So 15 is right on the money. Now the video you're looking at here is actually one I took in the backyard. And you can see when I touch that thumb wheel and you can see it rotate down and I take my finger off the thumb wheel and it continues down. I'm going again up and I'll take my finger off that thumb wheel in a second and you can see it skids past that point. So that's a pretty good adjustment of 15 for me to actually move down and slide a little bit and move up and slide a little bit. You can play around with it and find your own personal preference, but this factory one works for me. This last setting is called Enable Synchronize Gimbal Pan or Follow, and that's a mouthful. And this is, again, either on or off. You'd want to have this one on. And what this has to do with is the intelligence of the copter, knowing that you're going to be moving it in this direction, will actually just the tiniest bit move the gimbal in that direction before you start actually rotating the copter. Now you'll know if this is on by checking the settings. Another way to check it, and I'll show you in the video, is if you've ever noticed that your quad is sitting on something and you use the left button 
you can actually see the video move. The camera actually moves to the left. And I often thought to myself, well, I know I can't pan in that direction, so why would they give me that little bit of adjustment reacting to my joystick moving left? And it's because you kind of want the gimbal, again, to fool your brain, you want the gimbal to start the motion before the actual quad starts the motion. So by turning on this function, you're telling that gimbal, when I hit that left joystick motion or right joystick motion, I want you to lead that turn. I want that gimbal to turn first so the copter follows it. What that does, especially in follow mode, is it gives you a very fluid movement. So your brain is fooled by that, and it's a much smoother movement, much more cinematic. So definitely turn that on. The only time you'd want to turn that off is if you're going to be flying this thing FPV, because remember, again, the initial one we talked about, you want to have the camera locked to the body of the actual quad in FPV mode. And if that's on, it's going to fool you a little bit to think you're turning before you do. So if you're going to fly in FPV, put in FPV mode, which is going to lock the camera in a horizontal position, and then turn off that, that synchronized gimbal follow mode because that'll lock that camera so when you turn the quad it's going to turn with the same proportions as the quad turning but for me I'd leave it on all the time and if you reset the settings it'll stay on so pay attention in a second I'll show you exactly what it looks like if you've never played with this before the enable synchronized gimbal pan follow setting is either on or off and I'd recommend you keep it on unless you're flying FPV because again what it helps to do is to smooth out your turns to the left your turns to the right by allowing the gimbal to start that turn in advance of the copter actually physically making the turn. So it gives you a much more smooth turn and a more cinematic view, if you will, in that turn. Now here's a video of the quad sitting on a table. And again, I mentioned before, if you move your joystick left and right, you can see that the gimbals actually move. And that's exactly what happens when you're in flight as well and gives you that smooth cinematic turn. The last menu item on that page is the reset settings button and that's kind of your get out of jail free card. So if you hit that it'll bring everything back to the factory default settings and that's a great thing to use if you fooled around with these settings a little bit and maybe got a little off course and you want to go back and start from scratch. What I like to do as well is when I find settings that work for me I'll do a screen capture of that particular settings page and that way I always have a reference point to go back to. If I have to reset all of these to factory I can go back and make the adjustments to make it custom for exactly what I'm looking for. Okay, so that's it for the gimbal settings, and I hope you found this informative. I will spend some time going through the other submenu settings for all the other parameters you can adjust inside the quad in future clips, but this is the one that people seem to have a lot of interest in, a lot of questions about, and I hope that you found this video informative. As always, if there are questions I didn't get to today or things you want to have answered, drop them in the comments below. I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. Thank you very much for watching the channel, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing to the channel. I have a ton more content coming on both DJI products and other products as well. We're doing a ton of reviews of different quads coming up. So thanks again for watching, and as always, happy flying. Mm -hmm.